So first off, I'd like to thank everyone that is participating in today's Automation Tips webinar, which is center, centered around the introduction to machine logic. So my name is Jeremy. I'm the education lead here at Vention. And my role is essentially to educate users on how to use Vention's machine builder, which is the design software, as well as machine logic, which is the programming software that we'll be taking a little bit uh, more of a look at today. I'll be joined today by my colleague, Alfred, who will actually be doing the majority of the presentation and will be introducing himself later. So throughout the presentation, there are a few different ways that you can actually interact. The first is through the Q&A section of the Zoom platform. So feel free to actually say a question or put in a question there if there's something you'd like to know a little bit more about as Alfred presents. Otherwise, you can actually chat with other participants in the chat section. And finally, at the end, we will unmute everyone's mic so you can actually ask questions live. One thing to note is that this session is recorded and we will be sending out a recording to all the attendees as well as posting it on Benson's website uh, as well. Without further ado, I'll hand it off to Alfred for the presentation itself. Thank you very much for the introduction, Jeremy. So as mentioned, my name is Alfred Vendeville. I'm a customer success specialist here at Vention, and I will be leading today's webinar. In terms of the agenda that we have prepared for today, we're going to start off with a quick introduction to what machine logic is. And then we're going to go ahead and create Vention's own version of the classic programming challenge of creating a Hello World program by creating a simple automation sequence. Then we're gonna create a fully functional automation sequence, and then we will finalize everything by simulating the design that we have made in real time during the webinar. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and start off with an introduction to machine logic. All right, so let me just prepare. We're gonna start off by asking ourselves, what is machine logic? Essentially, machine logic is a code free programming and simulation tool designed for industrial automation available directly in your browser, where you can create your own automation programs and upload them to your machine motion controller. For those of you who don't know, the machine motion controller is our proprietary Vention control box, which can be used for Vention automation components. To further elaborate regarding this, we have a catalog of plug and play automation components that can easily be connected to our machine motion control box, which you can see right here. We have automation components such as, that range from linear actuators to rotary actuators to IO modules and conveyor system components. And these automation components can be programmed using the program that I will be showing you today, machine logic. So typical industrial automation solutions are, automation, are automated using ladder logic with custom software, which would require a high knowledge of logic gates, and you would have to know how to use and integrate multiple softwares. And all of this is usually done by an integrator or an automation engineer. Vention aims to democratize this process through machine logic. This tool can be used by any person in the company via a code-free programming interface, intuitive naming of functions, no libraries required to download, no complex communication protocols, and of course, with the added benefit of, of real-time simulation of your machine or application. So now we're gonna go ahead and start with the demonstration of machine logic. Right here, I have my machine builder tab open, and I'm gonna be creating Vention's version of the Hello World program which normally is everybody's first programming challenge when learning their first programming language. In our case, instead of writing lines of code to display a message, we will be building a simple automation sequence to make an actuator move. To select our linear actuator, I simply go to the parts library on the left, click on linear motion, and I will select the enclosed timing belt actuator, and then I will left click and place it on the 3D CAD space. Over here, I'll be giving you a quick sneak peek of one of Vention's smart design tools, the Configuration Assistant, which makes sure that you have all the components you need to automate and simulate your linear actuator. We'll be covering this in more detail in the next webinar on Machine Builder's smart design tools. I'll be going ahead and adding the motor using the smart, the Configuration Assistant, so I can select the motor that I would like, the type of sensor that we will be using for this linear actuator, and I can also select the type of controller that I would like. At Vention, we offer two types of machine motions, a machine motion four drive and a machine motion one drive. As the name suggests, the four drive can accommodate up to four motors, while the one drive can accommodate one motor only, and this is useful for applications such as range extenders. This will also make it possible for you to add your e-stops. 
So when I go ahead and click on auto complete, it will automatically add these components. And since this design already has a machine motion present, I'm not gonna go ahead and add that. I will go ahead and press escape and press X. And now all of the components have been added for my linear actuator. Now that everything has been set up, I can move on into the machine logic tab. To access machine logic, I simply go to the top left corner and click on machine logic. Upon entering machine logic, we are greeted with the configuration menu, which is the first step when creating your simple program. I'm gonna go ahead and first add this actuator to configure it by going to the bottom left corner and clicking on add actuator. From here, I can select the enclosed timing belt that I have present here. Quick side note, we have a couple actuators already present in this drop down menu, and that's because we have a, a complex system that's already in this design. Um, but we will go into more detail with on that later. I will select this component here and then rename it Y axis. As you can see, the motor has been automatically selected and configured, as well as the homing and end stop sensors, respectively. If we want to know which homing sensor is which, we simply hover over the part number and it will highlight that part in green on the 3D CAD space on the right. And the same is for the end stop sensor. Another thing that I wanted to add as well is that this configuration menu actually mimics how the configuration would work in real life. So for this design, we have a four drive machine motion present. So if I add three more drives, you can see that I can have drive one, two, three, and four. But if I add the fifth one, it says pneumatic because we can only support up to four as mentioned previously. I'll go ahead and delete these. And now that I have fully configured my linear actuator, I can move to the next step, which is going to the visual sequence. So the visual sequence is essentially where your programming happens. To start off, we're going to start by clicking on add application. Some of you may be asking yourself, what's an application exactly? This can be thought of as machine logics version of a program. And as a side note, you can add multiple applications within your design. I'll delete these for now. And I'm going to go ahead and start by naming my application Hello World. Now, in here, I will enter the main sequence. There are two types of sequences that you have on machine logic. You have your main sequence, which is analogous to the main function in other programming languages. And this is where you build and assemble your program. If I click on Add Sequence, I can add child sequences and these can be thought of as functions that are called within the main sequence. And we're gonna elaborate more on this later. Now I'm gonna go ahead and build my Hello World program. To begin, I will click on add command. And as you can see, we have a full list of all the commands that are supported by machine motion. I'll be sending you a resource later that explains all of these in more detail, but for this webinar, we'll be using three of them, add motion, add weight, and add execution. If I click on add motion, this is self-explanatory. This will add a motion of the motor. I, I will properly select the actuator here, which is Y axis. And here I can choose the type of motion that I would like. As you can see, there are three possibilities. Move relative is basically means move to a relative position based on the current position of your gantry. Move to position means you will move to an absolute position based on your home sensor and move to home will simply move your gantry towards the home sensor. So in this case, we'll start off by moving to home. And this is always good practice since we would always like to start from a referenceable position. And then I will go ahead and set the system speeds and accelerations. Once again, by clicking on add motion, this time selecting all actuators. And then here I will set the speed to 250 millimeters per second and the acceleration to 250 millimeters per second squared. Once everything has been properly configured, I can go ahead and add an absolute motion where we will move our gantry to a position of 250 millimeters. Now that our program has been completed, I can go ahead and press play to simulate my program in real time. I'll go ahead and simulate that once again. 
All right, so we do actually have a question here that's already been asked. So the question here states, I see that there's an ESOP button on screen under a module section. What is that there for? Does it do anything? Can you elaborate on that, please? Sure, great question. So again, we try to mimic real life deployment as closely as possible in the CAD environment. So we've actually added a software ESOP module that is fully functional. So if I go ahead and press play and start the program, and press the e-stop like I would in real life, it will open a pop-up that you would see in your machine motion pendants, and you would simply click release to release the software stop and then reset, and you can access your program once again. Perfect, thank you very much. No problem. All right, so now that we're done with Vention's Hello World, I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to do for a more complex system. But before I do that, let me just clear up what I've worked on. All right, so as he gets on that, so feel free to ask again any other questions you have in the Q&A section. I know we do have a few attendees or participants that joined up a little late. So if you do have any additional questions, feel free to throw them into the Q&A section as well. And back to you. Perfect, thank you. So right here on my 3D CAD space, I have a inspection station. This system consists of a two axis system where our Y axis is controlled using an enclosed timing belt and our Z axis is controlled by an enclosed ball screw. And this moves a vacuum gripper. And right here, I have a rotary actuator that rotates this table right here for inspection purposes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create an inspection station program. And the main rationale that I will have for this program is is divided into three distinct sequences. I'm gonna start by having a homing sequence where I will home all of the actuators in my design. Then I will have a pick and place sequence where I will pick up the part to be inspected and place it on the inspection station. And then the inspection sequence, which will rotate our table right here so that the part can be inspected. Once again, I will be configuring all of the actuators by going into the configuration tab just like for the simple automation sequence. And I'm gonna go ahead and select the enclosed timing belt, name it the Y axis, select the enclosed ball screw, name it to the Z axis, followed by the rotary actuator and we'll name it rotary actuator. Once again, the motor size, the motors have been automatically configured. One thing that I would like to change, however, in my configuration is the homing and end stop sensors for my Z axis, since I want my home position to be when this vacuum gripper is fully retracted. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right here. And then I'm gonna validate by hovering over the part number and seeing which, home, which sensor gets highlighted. Once that is done, I can move along into the visual sequence where I will create my program. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this from the previous one and click on add application once again. And we're going to be naming this inspection station program. From here, I'm going to, going to be adding three child sequences, which represents the three distinct parts that I mentioned beforehand. And I'll be naming the first one homing. For the homing sequence, we're gonna click add command and add a motion where we'll take the Y axis and move it to home add the Z axis and move it to home, and then take the rotary actuator and move it to home. Once that's complete, I'm gonna go ahead and set their speeds and accelerations to 250 millimeters and 250 millimeters per second squared. Now in this sequence right here, I have deliberately made an error where I home the Y axis before the Z axis. This is not ideal for this type of application since we would like to have our Z axis fully retracted towards the top before homing the Y axis to ensure that we're not going to be hitting anything. In typical programming interfaces, we would usually have to recategorize and uh, do some copy pasting to um, correct our program. But in this case, all I have to do is drag and drop and just like that, our program has been, re, has been repaired accordingly. Now that I've finished with my homing sequence, I can go ahead and start the pick and place sequence. And for this, I'm gonna first start off by adding a motion on the Y axis of 100 millimeters to the right. And then I will lower my Z axis 
to a position of 1000 millimeters to pick up the part, then I'm going to add a wait command, which as the name suggests, waits for a certain period of time. In this case, we'll wait for 500 milliseconds. And this will ensure that the vacuum gripper will engage so that we can pick up the part. Then we'll add a motion where we'll move the z-axis up again to the zero. Then we will move our y-axis to an absolute position of 1732.5, which was pre-calculated to be the center of our inspection station. Once that's been completed, we'll move our z-axis downwards to a position of 1000 millimeters once again. Wait for a period of 500 milliseconds to ensure that the vacuum gripper gets deactivated. And then I will move my z-axis up to a position of zero so that the inspection station program can start. Now I can move on to the inspection child sequence. And this will consist of the motion of our rotary actuator, as mentioned beforehand. And for this, I'll click on Add Motion. But this time, I'll select the rotary actuator. And I will start a continuous move of 10 degrees per second in terms of speed and 1 degree per second squared in terms of acceleration. Then I'll add a wait command where we'll let this continuous move run for 5,000 milliseconds. And then we'll add a motion where we will stop our continuous move at an acceleration of five degrees per second squared. I'll go over this one more time to summarize. In here, we're going to start by homing all of our actuators and then setting the system speeds and accelerations. Then in terms of pick and place, we're going to move to the right by 1,000 millimeters, lower our z-axis by 1,000 to pick up the part, wait for the vacuum gripper to engage, raise the z-axis back to zero, move our y to 1732.5, lower it to the inspection station, wait for the vacuum gripper to disable, and then raise the z-axis once again, followed by the inspection station where we will have a rotation for 5,000 milliseconds. Now that I have created all of my child sequences, I can go back to the main sequence where I will build the program. In this case, I'll click on Add Command, and this time I'll go click on Add Execution. From here, I can execute my child sequence either in parallel or in series. In parallel, meaning all of my sequen child sequences will occur simultaneously, while if I execute in series, I'll, they will happen one after another. In this case, I'll be executing them in series. So I'll add two other executions in series where I will se select the pick and place followed by the inspection. And just like that, we have finished our program and we can go ahead and simulate by pressing play. As you can see, the part that gets highlighted in green is the part of the program that is currently running. So right here, we can see that we're currently at the pick and place child sequence. So I will let this run for now and feel free to ask any questions on the chat or save them later for the Q&A section. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and play that again, just to show you how it would look for those of you who have missed it. All right. So as that's running, we did actually get a question. Uh, so it pertains a little bit earlier when you were doing the configuration step of the one axis and showing that you could only have four drives on the machine motion. So the question asks, what if you had a system that has more than four drives or, for example, more than four motors? Are you limited to only being able to program four motors? Yeah, so great question once again. Again, no. We've recently released the ability to daisy chain multiple machine motion controllers, both in the CAD and in real life. So with this, you'll be able to configure and program all the drives necessary for your application. All right, so we're just finishing up the second run of our simulation, and that pretty much covers everything that I had to present for this webinar. Thank you so much for watching and we will be moving to the Q&A section for our webinar.